Okay, folks, the greatest album of all time, dialogue that I'm seeing in the discussion board and in the emails is very engaging. I really like what I'm seeing. I noticed that you all are picking up on some things that you didn't see or notice about the artists and the projects before, such as uh, the producers, such as the overall message that the artist was trying to give you with the album. A lot of times, especially these days, people like a song, they'll pick that song out. They don't pay attention to the rest of the album. But a true artist will give you a complete thematic expression or, 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 or message with the whole album. Also, things like the album cover. Even the album cover speaks volumes to what the artist wants to tell you. And a lot of you are, are picking up on that. And I really appreciate that. That's very important. It's very important. So what we're going to do is, uh, no, what you're going to do is, you're going to give me the second draft in TurnInIn.com. Uh, you all have looked over each other's, and now I'm going to see it. Now. What's going to happen is I'm going to look at it and I'm going to give you some pointers on how to make it better and then give it back to you. Then you revise it one more time and then you're going to turn it in for the final draft. That's right. The final draft. And let me reiterate. Three is the magic number in regards to this paper. It needs to be three pages. It needs to have three quotes and it needs to have three sources. Three is the magic number. Also, when you get around to giving me the second draft. Let's say you want to be lazy since you figure, hey, I'm going to have another chance to revise it and touch it up for the final draft. I'll just give Dr. Hobbs one page. This is what happens with that. If I only give you advice on how to touch up the first or an only page that you have, that means for the final draft, you have to come up with two pages completely by your own that no one has seen. So it's always best for you to give me uh, a full draft as far as the rough draft is concerned, a full three pages so I can give you some tips on the whole paper, how to set up uh, the, the thesis better, uh, how to work on the body as well as the conclusion, as well as any issues you may have with your works cited page. Yes, I want a works cited page. All these things, when you give, when you put all of this in the rough draft, in the second draft, I can help you all along the way. Now, as I said, uh, I'm going to give it back to you. You revise it and you turn in the final draft. And after that, we'll go immediately because we only have seven weeks. We're going to go immediately into the second paper for the semester. This involves education. And this is very important because... I notice a lot of people, college students, they will go to Taco Bell and order something to eat. And if it's not made right, they have more of an issue with it than they do advisors and people who set them up to be in the wrong class. And what I mean by that is a lot of students are going through the college experience without really asking themselves, OK, is this doing what I expect it to do for me? It goes deeper than just that. The whole idea of what education is in this country. Um, I tend to ask myself, is education here to create employees or is it here to create leaders? Because I notice that a lot of people who dropped out of school are leaders in innovation, the entrepreneurs, uh, your Steve Jobs your Zuckerbergs, uh, of course, you know, you have your Jay-Z, you have your Bill Gates, you see what I'm saying? And a lot of other people who go the whole route, it seems as though education slowly chips away at their creativity, uh, their innovation, to stand out and do something on their own. You remember when you first started in elementary school, you said, hey, I'm going to be a fireman, I'm going to be a ninja, I'm going to be a chef on Thursday, and I'm going to be a police officer on the weekend. You had all of these dreams, and it seems like the longer you stay in school, the less you feel that you're able to truly take on and achieve. What's up with that? Especially in regards to college, because, hey, college, you're paying big money 
to learn a particular career or a particular path in particular, let's say um, you get into a major where, for whatever reason, your advisors and whatnot don't tell you that it pays on the average forty to fifty thousand, and you're walking around thinking you're going to get sixty, seventy, and eighty when you get out of here. How about you're in law school, and law school is extremely, ooh, extremely expensive, and then you come to find out as you get ready to graduate that because of all of the graduates, let's say there's 85,000 graduates from law school a year, but there's only 20,000 openings. What does that leave the rest of those law graduates? Well, I mean, you know they have loans, you know they have bills, okay? A lot of the times people get into professions, majors and what have you, and they have blinders on. They don't understand that when they get out, especially if they're not paying attention as they matriculate through their coursework, they could wind up doing something that has nothing related to their career. A lot of that, again, may have to do with your professors, your advisors. Are they setting you up with internships? Are they really giving you a clear understanding of what's going to be expected of you when you go out there in the field? All right. So uh, what I'm going to have you look at is a documentary called Declining by Degrees, and it is awesome. It is sobering. It's a little bit. It's a little frightening because it busts a lot of bubbles as far as what college is supposed to be what it's supposed to do for you, the issue of professors and educators being lazy is not a phenomenon just of your K through 12. There's a lot of overworked professors who haven't had raises in years and they're beginning to moonlight and do other side jobs just like students to make the ends meet. What happens to the quality of education you receive when most of the professors are in that type of situation? What happens to the quality of education you receive when, let's say you're at a university, and the university, uh, they set the tone for how much a professor is going to get as far as a raise is concerned based off of their research, a, a book they've written or something along those lines. That means they're going to take away from really having in-depth discussions and, and, and looking at papers a second and a third time, your papers in order to focus more on their own side work. Declining by Degrees is a serious documentary. It's gonna open your eyes to a lot of things. So you're gonna check that out. And then I'm gonna have this link uh, as far as learning how to frame your arguments. And that's gonna be important because we are going to have a Declining by Degrees debate. And then after that, we're gonna do our peer reviews for Declining by Degrees. It's gonna be another eye opener, so get ready.